Hello and welcome to episode four of Man Cave Mayhem's restoration of a Series 3 Land Rover. I thought uh, it would be uh, appropriate to give you some background on where this car has come from. And now that we've got it back home into the workshop uh, to give you an idea about kind of what we're looking at. I haven't really even had a really good look at it yet. But uh, the story is that this vehicle was parked up in about 2005 and has not been moved or started or touched since. And certainly the condition of the body and um, the dust and the amount of uh, cobwebs in it would uh, reiterate that it hasn't been moved for 15 or 16 years. So if we have a start to have a look around the, the car itself, so you've got an idea about what we're dealing with. Well, I've got... So as you saw on episode two, we managed to drag it up that slope. That uh, image does not give it justice. That's probably 15 or 20 degrees. And of course, we dragged it up with our little 25 horsepower Kubota. Awesome little tool, the big girl. So this Land Rover is a 1973 88-inch uh, Land Rover with a two and a quarter petrol engine in. It looks pretty complete and it doesn't look like it's been too heavily modified from standard. We've got the bull bar, of course, which uh, wouldn't have come from standard. That's not bad out here in central Queensland. Pretty useful. And I've taken the bonnet off and that's all I've done. Battery's out. And we can have a little, start to have a little look at kind of what we're, what we're dealing with here. So, so according to this, we've got uh, an 11, 11th month 1973 Land Rover. And there's another plate on here. Not sure what that says. We'll get to that in a bit. The engine's got the statutory oil leaks and the mud wasps have been going as well a bit of mud wasp there and etc but it looks complete it doesn't look as if anyone has come along and taken off any parts which is good windscreens are pretty dirty this one had a shovel holder on the wing and the color looks like it was originally that light blue. I don't think this is green that's faded. I think it was the light blue. Military style tyres. So the wiring is a little bit dodgy. Some extra wiring that's been put on, not sheathed properly. And unfortunately, the vehicle was used on the beach. Still some mud under the wheel arches from where it was last off-roaded. On the front here, we've already spotted a fair amount of rot, which is not good. And even the bull bar is uh, moving considerably. So the dumb irons are pretty scrap. A lot of surface rust on other parts. Grill is intact. So the bulkheads look really good at this stage anyway. Solid as. This one, this side too, looks pretty good to me. And interestingly enough, I've had a bit of a look, more of a look inside and the colour is actually, I don't know whether you can see that in the light. With all the faded paint, I thought it was light blue. It's not. The original colour was light green. Which pleases me, because light green is... Well, it's the traditional Land Rover colour. Yeah, you know, somebody previously uh, butchered it, but all this lot will come out, of course. I suspect that's what that was for. He had some kind of a radio mounted on there. But all that'll go. I'm going to try and keep it as standard as possible. Kind of 
saddens me when I see people fitting GMC five liter odd engines into these things. 200 TDI is quite, not quite so bad, of course. And I appreciate from a nice driving perspective, they are better. But I just somehow like the idea of keeping this original. Two and a quarter petrol. I'll probably take the engine out, strip it, have a look at it. See what the bores and the pistons and the big, the mains and the big ends are like. And then put it back together again as a two and a quarter petrol. I want to try and keep it standard. Not just for the value, but I don't know, it's how it should be. Which is why we've entitled this The Rover's Return. Bit of a pun on Coronation Street, but hey, it is The Rover's Return. Well, that's good. Wings are straight, body's straight, wheels don't look to be too dinked. A set of tyres that were very near these ones uh, were indicated to have been new in 2005. These have got uh, hardly any wear on them, but of course they're pretty old tires now. A lot of surface rust, but that's okay. We can deal with that. This part of the floor looks pretty good. Just a bit of mud. This chassis outrigger looks pretty good. That part of the chassis looks all right. Not sure what these are. No, just cable ties. Bit of pipe. Doors look good. Nice and straight. Yeah, can't even get that off. But I'm already smelling that uh, lacquer type smell so that will have all been uh, gummed up and i'm sure the carburetor would be the same looking under the rear chassis the uh, forward most outrigger looks pretty good i thought that was a hole but it's not this looks all pretty good this chassis at the back here looks pretty clean unfortunately of course the rear outriggers, as we know, are pretty rotten and are very flaky. Bits of surface corrosion, but nothing of any significance. Rear silencer looks pretty new. Never seen these before. Not sure whether these are standard or they've been manufactured. Pretty good idea, though. Keep things from... Uh, Smashing in the bush. Rear cross member, chassis cross member is stuffed. Absolutely rotten as a pair. But we may be able to, if the rest of the chassis is good, repair this section or indeed go for a full new chassis. This Outrig is also pretty shafted. All these are intact, these originals, by the look of it, look pretty good. Lo original Lucas ones, as many of you will know. The cheap copies that you can buy these days look great when they first go on, although they're badly molded and they don't last two seconds before they crack. But these ones are pretty good, say so original, original Lucas ones lights this body's nice and straight still the forward most rear outrigger they're not too bad i can't see any repair marks on the chassis either which is good as we know the rear one's just almost completely gone this end A lot of wiring that's uh, straight up against the uh, chassis may need to be looked at. Body's pretty straight. Back to the engine again. This is some of the extra wiring that's been put in for some reason. Two wires that go straight to the battery, or did do, that then go downwards and back up and feed this rear light in the back here. 
Moving on to the inside, we'll start at the back. All full of rubbish. Looks like this, uh, they've replaced some of the seats at some stage. There's a carburetor there. So whether the car be that's on is uh, a replacement. Also a replacement alternator. So whether this one's a replacement alternator that's on there, who knows? There's a starting handle in the back. Interestingly enough, before I removed it from its original resting place, I used the starter handle just to check that the starter, sorry, that the engine uh, turned over. And it does, which is good. The oil actually looks pretty clean. It's a little low in capacity, but it's pretty clean. Oh, need, uh, need I mention that uh, this has only been here a couple of days and we've already got the statutory oil leak but that's just because I've disturbed it. Undoubtedly, pretty much most of the seals anywhere, gearbox, diffs, transfer box, they'll all have uh, hardened off and be leaking like there's no tomorrow. Moving on to the front. Doors look pretty good, just the half doors at the moment, but that wouldn't be difficult to get the, uh, the tops for them. They look pretty good. Bottom frames are rotten though, unfortunately. That's gone right the way through there, you see my finger. And mud wasps again. Don't know what the base seats are. These look like uh, kind of vinyl seats with some kind of material on the top. With some kind of covers on them. Seatbelts are in place, which is good. Steering wheel looks pretty good. See the dash is complete. Mileage is down as 90,150. Now, whether that's original or that's miles, by the way, whether that's original or whether that has done 190, difficult to say. But there's not that much wear on the wheel, on the steering wheel. Pedal rubbers. Of course, they're cracked now. There's some wear on them, but there's not that much. So I'm kind of thinking that perhaps that mileage is the original mileage, 90,000. Amount of wear on top of the gear lever. Isn't too bad either. This particular one, hey hey, we've got overdrive. Where was chicken's teeth? Although, of course, whether any of this works or not is another matter. What do we got down here? We've got chassis numbers made in Solihull, England, my home home country, or was originally. The fact that all these are in place, all these um, these labelling, this labelling would kind of imply that the uh, it hasn't had a renovation. Floor looks surprisingly good. A little bit of rot there. Not too bad. Brake pedals, solid as. Clutch, nothing. Oh, you'd expect that. Handbrake it actually still comes on. Well, there's a lot of oil leaking out the uh, back of the transfer box into it. Some kind of a radio or something being fitted there. Don't know what that thing is sticking out. It's got a half roof on it. Somebody's fabricated, popping it up to uh, this roll bar here kind of think this would be ideal for a soft top Ashcroft, uh, sorry, uh, Exmoor trim soft top, maybe in black if we respray it originally, uh, the original blue. Interesting though, it's good that it's complete. I've got something to work with. So my plans, well, first things first, we'll see if we can get the engine running, just, see, just to see if it runs. And then if that runs okay, 
the next thing will be to just slowly start stripping it take the roof off the uh, roll bar tub will come off you need to have a look at that chassis effectively take off the front wings doors all the internal seating will come out and then we'll have a look at the base chassis and see what's going on there as to whether this one's workable and repairable or whether we just go for a new chassis that if that's the case and we go for a new chassis if any of you guys uh, know where it might be good to uh, to look for a chassis i'm led to believe they're in short supply in queensland if i've got to go interstate then so be it a lot of the places in the uk paddocks etc uh, don't uh, you've got to go and collect them from there they won't transport so we'll kind of see how it goes really but that's the plans if any of you guys have got any comments please comment below subscribe if you want to see the uh, if you want to see the next uh, episodes and click the bell and that will let you know when the next ones are uploaded till then see you soon